Hey everybody, and welcome to another APA tutorial. In this one, we are going to continue our little cheats mini series, and in uh, as a companion series to my old, oh, five years old now, five year old Excel tutorial, which is done on Excel 2016. Oh my god, I have moved on to Office 365. So we're we're definitely going to update those probably over the summertime. Um, as you can see, it is March, uh, so I am I'm recording a few quick videos to get me to summertime so I can go ahead and redo those because they are perhaps the most comprehensive tutorials because it's Excel. All right, so let's talk about Google Sheets here. In the last video that you may have seen, we talked about bar graph making. In this one, we're going to talk about line graph making. This one's probably going to be a little bit quicker because you may have seen the previous one where I spent a little bit more time going over the options. But in this one, we are going to make a line graph, as you can see. And then in the next video, we're going to do a scatter plot. Okay, and then, you know, regression lines and everything like that. So let us go ahead and make a line graph. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is have your data ready. Um, and here I, 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 it's a fresh sheet, but I'm going to be using the same uh, data that I did in the last video to make the bar chart. Because honestly, the bar chart or the column chart is essentially the same thing as a line chart. It's instead of the height of bars, we're actually just going to represent these means as points and then connect them with imaginary lines. Okay, so just a quick setup of what the data that I have here. Again, it's not a raw data set. It doesn't have individual data points for men and women, math skills, confidence building, but just to give you a setup for this data is that um, imagine here we have a two by two P by E uh, factorial design where we've got men and women who participated in one of two uh, feedback instructional conditions. They either got uh, feedback focused on their math skills, right? Uh, you got this right, you got this wrong, uh, you you made math error, you didn't make math error, these kinds of things. And then a confidence building uh, intervention slash feedback where they were given uh, cues on increasing their confidence. Hey, you can do good, you can do well at math. You are, are good at finding commonalities between numbers, blah, 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 these kinds of things, right? And it's a, uh, it's, canned data, uh, essentially, you know, made up is what I mean by canned, um, and just expressing data in, uh, you know, for an interaction uh, uh, between gender and the intervention slash feedback. And that's to address a hypothesis about stereotypes and women and math and, and math ability, right? So how do you uh, better prepare uh, girls and women to do better at math, right? Under this this, this old stereotype that women can't do math, uh, that kind of thing. Not that I subscribe to that. I don't think that's very, I don't think it's true, of course, but the stereotype has been built over years and years and years of self-fulfilling prophecies, that kind of thing. So we've got this issue. And so how do we increase scores on math tests, right? And that's what the DV is here. The DV is score on a math test, all right? Out of 100. So still pretty terrible for, all participants. <laughs> Not to say that, you know, people didn't do well, right? These are means. These are cell means for men who went through math skills, men who went through confidence building, and it goes down, which is so weird. So weird. I don't get it. So let's go ahead and see if there's an interaction because one of our visual heuristics for seeing whether or not there might be an interaction, of course, not statistically uh, significant necessarily because we're only making a graph, but it is one of our it is one of our cues, right? And so we're looking to see if these lines cross over. And it's a little bit easier to detect an interaction on a line graph than it is to detect an interaction on a bar graph, just using these visual heuristics that we have. Okay, so let's go ahead and select all nine cells here. And Google is going to do a pretty decent job of labeling my graph once I get it. It's going to make these two different lines and it's going to put male and female on the X axis. And that's generally speaking how this works, although you can flip the data if you want to with a quick uh, flick of the button. So we highlight those and we're going to go ahead to insert and we're going to go ahead to chart. OK, so we're going to click on that. And of course, it's like, oh, you should make a column chart. I don't want to make a column chart. I just want to make a line chart. OK, perfect. So we have a line chart here. It doesn't like me. It doesn't like it when I move this and resize it, I guess, because I have I guess you can click anywhere to move it. Okay, that's fair. All right, so let's double click on that uh, to bring it back up. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller yet again. Okay, so, all right, let's go. Thank you. <laughs> so we've got a line chart. Okay, our data range is B4 to D6, which is B4 to D6, okay? Our x-axis is B4 and B6, uh, B4 to B6, excuse me. Of course, I don't have anything there, so it's not gonna put a label. And then our series is math skills, or excuse me, math skills is this one, and um, confidence building is that one, okay? Uh, red. So math skills blue, confidence building, and as you can see, it made the uh, labels like that. And of course, by default, use row four as headers and use column B as labels. So they call these labels and they call, I guess, the lines or the things that are in the legend as headers. And then here's where I said you can switch. So you can put math skills like that, right? It doesn't change the graph that much, which I think is amazing. But yeah, there you go. We're going to go ahead and put gender down here on the x-axis anyways. Okay, so there we go. So that's the line graph. Let's go ahead and customize this. And let's go down the uh, process here to make sure that we get everything that we need to for our APA style figure. Okay, that's the point of this. I'm sure there are many kinds of uh, tutorials on YouTube for making charts and 
I'm adding to them, but I'm specifically saying this is we are going to make this APA style. Okay, so chart, chart style, background color, uh, white, probably a good idea. Font, as in the last video, I'm going to make it Arial. Okay, and that's going to, I think that was by default anyways. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Border color, um, I'm going to put none because I want it to be white, just like the background, because it's going to probably end up in a Word document. And Word documents are usually white or Google, Google Docs. Sorry, I, I default to Word documents. Um, it's going to be in a word processing document. Paper is white. And, you know, if you were to print it out, it, it wouldn't have a border around it. OK, um, we don't need to do anything else. We can do smoothing if we want to. As you can see, it doesn't really do much. Um, maximize uh, puts the plot all in the edges of the graph. We don't want to do that. Plot null values. There are no null values. And then we can go into compare mode. I'm not entirely sure what compare mode does. I've never done anything with that. So let's go into chart and axis titles. So we don't want a chart title because APA graphs do not have chart titles. So I'm going to select this all, math skills and confidence building, and I'm going to hit delete or backspace or whatever your favorite delete button is. And it's going to get rid of it because we don't, we don't want it and we don't need it. But we do need our axes titles, right? We don't need a chart subtitle because that's not. And so you, your question you might be asking is, why don't APA style graphs or, or figures have chart titles? And that's because they have um, figure captions. And the figure captions is supposed to give the reader all of the information that they need to read what's going on in this. And you would put that underneath using your word processing document uh, and app. You would put that word uh, underneath. You would do all of that. Right. So the idea here is not to clutter this up with with chart titles and subtitles and all of that stuff. But we do need uh, axes titles. Right. And while this might be pretty self-explanatory. We do want to put the word gender in here. I, and I always miss, I always make mistakes spelling. That's great. Um, Arial uh, was our default. So we put that. So for the whole entire thing, when we do chart style, if I choose Arial, it's going to choose Arial for everything. But I also want to make this readable. So I'm going to make that 14 font size. And uh, as you'll see, everything's going to end up as 14 font size. Let's go to the vertical axis and let's type in uh, math test score out of 100. OK, because it was out of 100 and I said that already. OK, and I'm going to also make this 14. Now, let's go ahead and expand this, make it a little bit taller so it doesn't get cut off. Make sure your graph is as big as your, you know, your, your X axis or your Y axis label not getting cut off. Right. OK, so we can close chart and axis tiles. We'll come back to series because that's when we get to, to standard error. So let's move on to the legend now. The legend, again, you can put it anywhere. Auto generally puts it up at top, I think, is what I see most often. Um, bottom would be, uh, if I put this to bottom, it would put it under the axis label. Don't necessarily like that, so I'm going to put it back to auto. Okay. Um, left would put it over here. I don't recommend that. It makes it That makes this area of the graph kind of messy and cluttered. Right would put it over here, and I think that's great. Um, and you can move it, so it puts it at the top, but you can move it down if you want to. Um, and then inside, I would not, I don't recommend this. I see people do this all the time, but of course, and you can move this around. You can like put this, oops, you got to double click on it. Um, you can move it around like that. I don't know. Uh, no, that's custom, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and put auto and it's going to put it at the top like that. And you can see it's a little off, it's a little off center. So I can move that if I want to over. So it's not off center. That's a little thing for me. So let's go to horizontal axis. Horizontal axis is uh, going to be um, these these dogs here. All right. So of course, I want to make this readable. So I'm going to put male and female as 14 point font. And um, by the way, everything looks big here because I've got this zoomed in. So just to make it readable, so I've gotten feedback in the past about it. So make it readable. I can reverse my axis order and put, um, you know, reverse whatever order I have here. You can slant the labels as well. That puts them like this just in case there are like a lot of them. We don't need that. So we're just going to do auto and it puts them flat, right? Which is the same thing as zero, but then you can do 90. You know, at least there's no 120, right? They're backwards. <laughs> backwards. I love it. All right. So that's the horizontal axis. Vertical axis, though, we have a few more things that we can do for the vertical axis because vertical axis is generally represented by the numbers, right? So we can do that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make it 14 font so you can see it. OK, um, I do want the axis line to be shown. I, I honestly I don't know why this is the default off. I don't know why. Maybe it makes it look less cluttered. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I love the Y axis literally being there. I also think this is old fashioned because I don't see this a lot. Uh, anymore is just showing the maximum uh, and minimum values, just representing the breadth of the entire DVs, right? So a Likert scale, you're not just showing where the data is from like 2.5 to, to 4 or whatever, because that represents the range of data in your data set. No, it should be if it's a five point scale, it should be one to five. And you should show the graph looking like like it should. OK, um, you can scale. Uh, your thing if you need to, or you can put it on log scale. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that. Obviously, we don't have log scale. Uh, and then the number format is from source data, or you can make it different kinds of currencies and things like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that either. But you can put your mins and max in there. So in the axis label, uh, the vertical axis uh, options, you can't change the step okay, of, of your grid uh, or of your y axis, right? You can't change the step, but you can change it in grid lines and ticks. So here, by default, we start at the vertical axis for some reason, okay? And we've got major spacing type and 
you do step or count and major count is set to auto. I don't like that. Um, you can also do minor uh, as well, count and step, and then uh, none through 10. We're going to skip minor because we don't need minor. But what I want to do is I want to change my step. Now, it's going to smash everything together, but so I'm going to change that to step. Instead of 25, which is what it's doing by default, let's do every 20. And there you go. It puts 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, right? And so my means, you can see here between 60 and 80, but I could also do every 10, right? And so it'll put that on the graph. I can do every five and this will look terrible because it puts all the grid lines in there. So you can change the step uh, any way that you'd like, right? Count is a little bit different because if I go back to count, it, it only allows me to change this, right? To, to some number. And when I click away, count, major count, it really doesn't change anything, right? So I don't really want that. I want step and then I want to do, let's just do 20 like we, like we said. That makes sense. We do every 15 if we wanted to. But, you know, uh, we're going to get rid of, rid of these grid lines in just a second. And we are going to click away. Oh, no, my 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 X axis disappeared. Oh, no. Well, we'll come back to that one. Let's go ahead and get ticks, shall we? Um, not the bug, right? Let's get tick. So it'll put a tick at every uh, value that is represented here. But of course, I don't like cross ticks. Cross ticks are, are, are gross. You have the option of outside, inside and cross. Uh, inside looks like this. That's also nasty. Cross looks like that. Okay. And then um, outside is what I tend to go with. And that is, you know, there you go. And you can change the size of the ticks. So auto is what it shows, shows there. Um, and I'm wondering if I can change this to like two pixels. No, six is. So you have to go with the default here. And I think 12 was what it was doing. Make them as small as possible. There you go. Six pixels. All right. Perfect. OK, we're not done yet, though, because I need to go to horizontal axis and I need to get my tick marks. So you have to click on ticks to get your X axis line back. But what I'm going to do is for ticks, I'm just going to say none. So it's going to leave the X axis there but it's not gonna have any tick marks there, which is good. That's what I want, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and close that. Last but not least, let's go up to series. We wanna make some changes here. By default, the line graph only does the lines, but let's actually get some point shapes here, shall we? So instead of applying to all series, we only wanna do math scale, right? The line color is blue. You can change that if any, uh, if you want to, um, but let's go ahead and change this to circles um, and not 10 pixels, oh my God. Two pixels, yeah. seven pixels, no, two pixels. Two pixels just to show you that it is um, a different shape, right? And the cool thing it does is it put it's put uh, math skills as circles, right? All right. Now we need to go and do the same thing for confidence building. So confidence building is red, okay? Point size, let's go to two pixels and we can change it to a square if we want to. It'll change it to squares, although two pixel squares are kind of hard to see. I'm gonna zoom in here. Oh my gosh, there they are. Um, but it changes the, the legend if you want. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back at circles. Just doing two circles is fine. I think that's fine. In my opinion, that's fine. Um, all right. So there we go. And then you can change, you know, line thickness if you want to make them thicker, all that stuff. Now to the bad news uh, of our situation is error bars, right? So I've got these four standard errors, standard error for each of these means, right? It's a precision marker. But Google Sheets does not have the ability to add custom error bars. So we are kind of at a loss. We can do constant, we can do percent, or we can do standard deviation. And it does whatever it wants to with these uh, percent you know shows you that constant is a value standard deviation is some weird kind of calculation that's going on right so and and of course we for our my two points in confidence building right these are the two confidence building points three point three point six seven should be for this dot and three point four three should be for this dot can't do that unfortunately so with constant and what i did in um that's 355 sorry let's put a point there what i did for the bar graph one is i just said okay well let's just take the average of these two and it's not the exact average but it's 3.55 and that's about in between those two points that's the closest that i'm going to get to actual standard errors represented in my error bars i can't even do confidence intervals like you can do in jasper jamovi it's really really deficient in this graph making space which is unfortunate honestly unfortunate to be sure but that's as close as i can get and so that was with confidence building because we were still there so but we can go back to math skills and we can do error bars and we can change this to constant and do another 3.55 because again take the mean of these two values right and it'll put it on there and you can see that there's not really any difference between um uh, men and, and any kind of feedback, they're just going to score somewhere in this range. But it really helped uh, uh, the women in the study to do confidence building, right? As opposed to focusing on their math skills. Focusing on their math skills was a stereotype threat, according to the um, the creators of this data set, right? Which exists in the literature for sure. Uh, so focusing on their math skills made them do worse on the test, which will which will happen. And so we have a clear interaction, probably, um, because our lines crossed over, disordinal interaction. Okay, and then we can see if there's any main effects uh, uh, of gender, if there's any main effects of the math skills by just looking at this graph and seeing how uh, those visual heuristics help us, right? And so that is how you do, come on now, a line graph in Google Sheets. If you have any comments, suggestions, other feedback, as well as questions, please leave those in the comments down below. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.